Got Sweet. an actual question come through. Of what? Who fe? Who's? Oh God, it's one of my Twitter followers. So here we go. It's fuck Mary Kill, Theresa May, Donald Trump, and Putin. <laughs> And we're live. <laughs> so we have James and Greg on the show. If you introduce yourselves and pimp your shit. Holy poops. You go first, Greg, if you want, big man. Okay. Uh, my name's Greg. Um, don't know what much else sad about that. I do a lot of comic cons. Uh, I've done six of here. Uh, just back from a holiday in Spain, so I'm in a relatively good mood, and uh, I very stupidly decided to volunteer. No, no, I got volunteered for this. Uh, so why the hell not? Eh? All those who volunteer stand forward. Mm -hmm. You want me to introduce myself? Yeah. Uh, if you would. If I must. <laughs> uh, hi, my name's James Lundy, and... Um, I'm not an axe murderer. Uh, I run Edinburgh Comic Con. I uh, try and write comic books. Uh, I sell comic books and deal in stuff. And uh, I've been stuck in the school. I could probably have done something better with my time, to be perfectly honest with you. That pretty much sums me up in a nutshell. That pretty much sums up almost everyone that lives in Scotland. <laughs> what? Your school report? Easily. <laughs> James is very good, but he's easily distracted, talks a lot, and whatever else. Aye. Mine probably no. just said Andrew's an arsehole. That was probably my school report. I wouldn't like to meet your teachers. <laughs> <laughs> so what's everyone got going on this week? Uh, well, let's see. Um, I got back in... Uh, Friday morning at 3am, uh, slept off uh, the overnight flight, uh, went to see Wonder Woman and Transformers uh, when I rose on Friday. Uh, Wonder Woman, fantastic, uh, absolutely loved it. Uh, what I found really refreshing as well as it ties into uh, Justice League and all the rest of it, it was a good standalone film. Uh, so, you know, I wouldn't hesitate to recommend it. Transformers, on the other hand, goodness. See if you got a nine-year-old boy to play with his King Arthur. And Careful. His Transformers toys. Sorry, <laughs> that's uh, uh, yeah. It's a mess. Is that bad as it means you? I really, I, I watched uh, Wonder Woman. I thought Wonder Woman was, it was really good, fantastic. I don't know if it's as good as what everybody's been making out. Um, it's not a perfect film, but by God, it's the best cinematic release for them in a long time. Uh, I was, I was saying that the uh, story-wise, I mean, I'll be honest with you. You start watching it, and like Thema Scarver to me, I thought, oh, that's great. That looks brilliant. And then there's a go in the film, and aesthetically, it looks it looks really nice. Um, you get to the special effects at the end, and I was like, oh, shit, man. I just really let the film down for me when you've seen some of the lightning and the special effects, and some of the CGI, and um, a couple of, like, maybe the directional stuff, like the blocking techniques for when she attacks some of the enemy. I thought to myself, how did we go for that shot to that shot? And I was like, oh. come what what's going on here? You know? Um but I was certainly I mean it was miles above like the cinematic release of Batman vs Superman and miles above the cinematic release of um Suicide Squad. Um I loved I actually enjoyed Man of Steel. Uh, and I enjoyed the ultimate edition of Batman vs Superman. So I can't really say too much. The cinematic version of Batman vs Superman I've done jobbies that were more cinematic than that. That's probably, my take on it. Probably just as hacky, I know. Yeah. 
Uh, the, the highlight for me only uh, came to fore when I was watching it on the telly was Watchmen Graffiti. I mean, like, uh, if the highlight of is they bought a quote in that, and that, of course, was um, a nod to the Watchmen. If that's as good as it gets, then you get a serious problem. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, it was just hockey itself. I mean, that I mean, I went with, um, went, went with the wife, went with Claire, uh, two boys, and my son watching it. I was pumped up for it. I was pumped up for Batman versus Superman. I thought, wait, this is going to be brilliant. And I sat watching it, and it opens up, and I'm like, oh. if it is mu- try to remember it as it happened. I just started to feel deflated. And the first couple of hockey bits, I, was, I found myself making excuses for it. And if and if there are a couple of mere hacky bits, I thought myself, I shouldn't have to make excuses for this. You know, and it's just kind of jumping in a bit to another. And I thought, no, 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 no. But when I got to see the Ultimate Edition, it was just so much better. I mean, it was a hell of a longer. Mm-hmm. But I explained so many different things. For starters, like the reporter guy who gets shot, it's Jimmy Bloody Olsen. And I'm like, oh, all right. That's pretty cool, you know. Um, so there's like, there's a few other wee things, uh, odds and sods, um, to uh, the, the take of it. I much better film, much better. Film. It was more like actually to me the ultimate edition of Batman versus Superman was more like a, a film than a like a blockbuster movie. Uh, and what I mean by that in terms of the tone is you'll get guys like, say, Steve Soderbergh when he's done Traffic or, you know, some of these type of films, they've got a certain tone, they tell a story. And I felt I felt that I almost had that same vibe or feeling for BVS, the Ultimate Edition, as opposed to, like, watching, like, Lethal Weapon 4 or whatever, like, you know what I mean? So it's like... Yeah. Uh, things blowing up and laugh a minute and what have you, you know, superhero fighting superhero, which they were. Mm-hmm. You know, and there's a lot of different, and things just kind of felt definitely less clunky. You know? um, it was, there were certain elements you still had to think about and certain elements that if you were a fanboy, then you got mm-hmm. where they were coming from and what they were um, hinting at. If that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen the extended cut of Batman vs Superman. It was one of those. I remember I went to watch it in the cinema with my wife. My wife's not exactly a fan of these types of movies to begin with, so it was <laughs> sitting through it, knowing that she'd fucking hate in every minute of it. And then it gets to the point where spoilers: they stop fighting because their mummies have the same name. And it's just like, oh, for fuck's sake. It's like, what five-year-old fucking wrote that? I, I'm pretty sure, you know, when uh, the, the created kind of like Batman back in the day and Superman back in the day, you know, the mother's names, they thought they're self fucking, see in the future, I'd never make a film. Right, this is what we got to do, boys. All right? If they're ever getting done and dirty, fucking Martha, it's their safe word. I mean, it's probably a coincidence, huh? I don't know. You, you think there was maybe, I'd, you think maybe Martha, there was like a, I don't know, certain names I had to pay a license fee for, you know, and like maybe Martha was maybe the, you know, the cheapest gents. So fuck it. Everybody in the DC universe is mother's called Martha. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny though, is there, be honest, if someone, if you're punching fuck at someone and they say the name of your mum, Ain't gonna really stop you punching the fuck out of them. That's it. In the moment, that's that's all you're thinking about. What do you say my ma's name for, by the way, big man? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hang on a minute. So you wait till me. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It, it was a unique spin on someone saying you're mob at the start of a fight or during a fight. It's a unique spin on it. That's that's obviously the American version. Over here, it's 
like you know, it's get your maw or pants back or whatever <laughs> kind of crap that you used to say when you were like eleven. <laughs> um, I never said that. When I was eleven, I was still eating mud when I was eleven. Yeah, man. you grew up quick where I come from. <laughs> I would see. I would hear no evil, see no evil, and speak no evil. Eh? <laughs> oh, got Sorry. an actual question come through. Of what? Who fe? Who's? Oh God, it's one of my Twitter followers. So here we go. It's fuck Mary kill Theresa May Donald Trump and Putin <laughs> oh Jesus you be used can go first because that's me babe <laughs> I'd say you would kill Theresa May and it's a toss up between the other two, but that just sounds wrong. <laughs> At least Mr uh, Vladimir, you know, you're kinda you're kinda halfway there with his name, you know, if you're assuming the position. <laughs> you know I mean? Hey, oh, put in. That's bad. Stop it. That's you just just <laughs> I'd actually, I think to be, I think to be me sometimes. To be perfectly honest with you, right? She's a complete useless fucking politician, right? But sometimes she gets it tight unnecessarily mm. because I mean, when she was going on about the the wheat fields and stuff like that, you know, what's the what's what's the most naughty thing or whatever you've done? Oh gosh, oh oh oh, we maybe were running through wheat fields with our children. I was like, fuck me. I mean, that's the kind of kid, that's the kind of childhood I want for my kids. You know what I mean? Mm. I'd love them to have that kind of innocent childhood where, you know, listen, if it comes to running through wheat fields or growing up a neighbourhood fucking surrounded by junkies and drug dealers and, you know, folk that are next door neighbours like F and C and then B and that's actually, that's probably like my house, probably the, the language, but I mean, I mean, apart from that aspect, I, I'd take that any day, you know what I mean? Um, I grew up sort of in Dumfries, which is practically the countryside. It was like town, but five minutes countryside. We were getting chased by. Admittedly, we weren't running through the wheat fields. We were probably jumping off his haystacks and doing stuff. And old Dixon, the farmer, used to come belting up the field in his mini. Yeah. Bloody so shotgun. Can I mean, gosh, can you? Ah, it's Dixon! You jumping off the thing away, running like hell. Whoomp! Over the fence or the. Woof! Away. Up the water, uh, a bit of fungi hood. So I mean, that you know, stuff like that. You know, you think to yourself, ah, I think it's, but it's, you know, when you find somebody that completely fucking sorry, just in my humble opinion, this is only my opinion. It's not expressing the views of anybody else or anything. But you know, it must be the the fucking guys in the grey suits must be having a few. That's my, my big man at work. Uh, the weekend, he comes to go on about the guys in the grey suits, and he's right, you know, they must be having a field day with her. Mm. You know what I mean? Getting her to can change your, change your opinion every left, right, and centre. Um, There's no money tree, blah, blah, blah. Oh, but here's your 1.5 billion pounds. <laughs> Fuck's sake, man. You know, I don't, Jesus Christ, I'd hate to think, you know what I mean? <sighs> Actually, you see, the Queen's speech, you know, well, I says to the Queen, I says to her, right, firstly I says to her, so, how exactly did you kill Diana? And then I says to her, I says to her, this Queen's speech, what's, what's the point of that? What's the point? I can't, I, I did away, so, uh, Theresa, Theresa May, you know, she'd maybe gain her sympathy. Trump, mm -hmm. actually, there's some things a little bit Putin actually I quite like to be honest with you. Um, he's quite a strong, quite a strong uh, man. You know what I mean? He's kind of did they take any fucking shit? No, 
I reckon maybe some of his videos are probably dressed up a wee bit for theatrics, but there was this one time there was a video and there was all these millionaires or whatever sitting about a table and he's like, it's translated at the bottom. I, I can't speak a fucking word of Russian anyway, so I just have to take ah. it. You know, yeah, vodka. <laughs> well, fucking, my, my, uh, my Russian's limited to red heat and that's about it, you know. Um, I thought it was a tourist video, by the way, red heat. Anyway, so he's, he's going to them. What's he saying? Then we say something like, uh, "So I show up here and here you're scuttling about like a bunch of cockroaches and stuff like that." And it's something that they were like, you know, we need. He says he had this this sheet of paper, and I'm, I'm pretty sure if anybody's watching, um, you like I say, if anybody's right, yeah. there's a bit of paperwork. He says, "Is everybody signed this?" And he says to you know the guys who's a millionaire or whatever, he says, I can't he see your uh, your signature on this piece of paper. So he gets up. I'm sure he got up himself and he walked over and he gives him the pen to sign it. Because he's talking, he's like, this is, we got to get these factories back open. He says, this is thousands of people's jobs here. This is their livelihoods. So from that point of view, you can't fault the, you can't fault the guy here. And the same with Bobag, you know, like Mr. Tango Man, uh, you know, Trump. Uh, yeah, you know, there's so many things he says, I'm just like, oh, fuck it, I'm like, oh, did, did that come out his did that come out his mouth? And sometimes you wonder, is is that how he said it, or is that how the media said it? Or, you know, and then sometimes I, mean, I, I don't i I'm just going to make it to you by the way, I don't support Trump. I'm just trying to be devil's advocate. Right. So you can take whatever I'm saying, you know make whatever you want it is but it's no i'm not saying nothing to support i'm just i'm just you know try to see it for another side this thing we're leaving the paris climate thing and they were talking about how some of the industry has been moved to china and how they're like having to bring down carbon emissions doesn't they kick into 2030 you know like, oh, fucking that's ages away man eh? so 2030 you know, if he leaves that, brings industry back here, he can control the carbon emissions here, but he can also make sure that the money that gets raised for the industry goes to the American people. Um, and he can keep an eye on it. You know what I mean? So, like, bring it back for China, sort of thing. Um, I mean, I can't even really see. I don't know too much. I, I take an interest in it, but I don't know a hell of a lot about global, uh, global economics and stuff. Um, but I can, for that point of view, can kind of seen it and I've seen you've seen videos of you know like some of these steelworks and that in China and they've they got protective suits and all that they're just a pair of shorts a pair of shoes and that and you know the thing will be into the big massive fire thing and then they've got a big massive barrel of water and they're throwing the water over the top or so to keep the body temperature doing and stuff so um, I'm pretty sure that's not the case right across the board and that might be dated maybe it's different now uh, but there's all different things and different stuff in politics sometimes, man. You know what I mean? Sometimes you just got to kind of shoot in the air and hope you can. Whatever it lands is the best. Because, you know, who, who do you believe? Who do you not believe in? You know, and you can stay true to yourself. And I think maybe that's when you're into a winner. Uh, you know, heaven see So, right. Aye. May should probably get you into sympathy. Um, what was I in? Hmm? What was that again? Fuck. Marry Mud. kill. Fuck Mary kill. Um Fuck Mary kill. I'd probably kill Trump, right? Because then his missus would be a widow and then she'd be back on the market, right? <laughs> right, so I'm thinking, up there's for thinking, she'd be back on the market, right? Put in uh, I'd marry him powerful motherfucker, you okay know what I mean? So I'd tough him at my back. So that would be a marriage or um, convenience. So there you go. I have pure magic convenience. Go him behind my back. Kill Trump. That frees up his missus. Not just good as a wink to a blind man. Uh, and may maybe a, a wee sympathy. Uh, that's about the best shit getting at me. Craig. Craig. <laughs> well, I don't think I'm going to top that. Uh, so, fuck my kill. Uh, I'm tempted to say uh, kill Putin, uh, you know, because, you know, you want to neutralise your biggest threat. Um, and, you know, this is a guy that, that goes out and hunts his own dinner. 
you know, uh, if you can go, can point me to another world leader since Teddy Roosevelt that did that for fun and profit, I'd be very, very glad. Um, and play for country. Mary, I'm going to say Mary Trump because, you know, that's going to make, uh, well, you know, you know he'd, he'd like that. Um, yeah, and I've really, it's Hobson's choice, isn't it? Because by the process of elimination, uh, uh, Theresa May is Theresa May, and I guess I'm a DUP if I understood the question properly. <laughs> DUP's just fucked Theresa May. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well done. <laughs> uh, that's, about as, that's about as political as she has ever got. <laughs> and she's collectively fucked a lot of us in Yinfold Swoop. Never mind David does Dallas. Fuck it hell. Putin seems like he would be fun to hang out with as long as he didn't get offered a cup of tea. And Donald Trump seems like he'd be fun to hang out with as long as you're white and rich. Because if you're anything else, you're fucked, basically. <laughs> Uh, Donald Trump's not even white. Yeah, he's tangerine. Aye, fucking he'd be his, he, fucking, he's that orange. He should be in the DMP, uh, DUP. He's probably not orange in half the DUP. <laughs> he'd be it's... fucking organising marches through the middle of fucking America. He's so orange, he should be supporting Rangers. I don't even give a fuck. If the folk are watching, they're Rangers supporters. I don't like Celtic either, so it's fine. Oh, my, it's, my brother it's not big at you. No, it's not like normal. Fucking. It's a sc well, Scotland after all. I mean, yeah. It's water for dogs. But Ed, listen, trust me. Never mind, you know, doing this year if you can't take it. I have to take it most of the time because my chat's crap when it comes to stuff like that. Genuinely. I get off my younger at my oldest year. Yeah, well, being an energy supporter, you're kind of the, the butt of quite a few jokes. <laughs> Especially when you, you know, you've got a 10,000 all-seater stadium and you get 800 people to a game. You had a good uh, crowd at the weekend for Elton John. Yep, it's the first time it's been full in a while. <laughs> Was Elton John playing the Edry? Uh, yeah, Fair play. Hmm. Yeah, what fucking possessed them to play in Airdrie? Um, the Stone Roses were on at Hamden. Uh, a shame because I think that would have been a hell of a double bill. Hmm. Ah, I thought that'd be bloody. Aye, ah, fair enough. Hmm. Crocodile Rock followed by I Want to Be a Door. Eh, a Door. Fucking I know. I mean, that song, I Want to Be Adored, used to work in uh, the co-op in Dumfries, like a part-time, my first ever part-time job, which I got sacked for, uh, before we work at William. It was, uh, listen, it was really a stupid thing to do. Um, I'll tell you about them. But uh, they used to play music in my fucking elves. And they had that, uh, that I Want to Be Adored by, um, like, Stone Roses playing it. And I swear, for the best part of six months, I thought they were singing about I Want to Be a Gnome. I was like, I just couldn't understand the lyrics. I wanna be a gnome. What are they singing about? For? Oh, I don't know. And then the door, and suddenly it's all clicked. It's like Peter Cage got nothing on me, but nothing, by the way, with the, the funny lyrics. And that's for getting sacked. Well, we were changing this. We were getting ready in time. Eh? And I'm just standing my back against the wall. And I've swung my heel against the wall. And there was plasterboard. It must have been about that thick. My heels went right through the plasterboard. And I was like, oh, shit. Um, so I went downstairs, no tool to anybody there. And the foreman's come downstairs and went, Who's kicked a hole in the effing wall? Like, oh, oh boy. Uh, I ended up basically, I offered to pay for it, but they didn't bother, they just let us go. So I was like, Oh, okay. 
the work of William was two weeks after, so probably a mixed blessing there because you learn for your mistakes. I don't know. Well, Craig, you look like somebody that's been sacked for jobs. Uh, well, let's see. Um, that was a good one. Uh, so I was a temp. Uh, I was in a PR firm. Um, and it was a short term of sight. Uh, and I was in there for, well, well, let's see, two hours. I was asked to get the coffee. Uh, uh, I, I picked my head around. Yeah, can you have a look at this coffee machine? Um, right, you see, I put the granules in there. But nothing's happening. It's just coming out hot water. <coughs> nice. Uh, this was uh, around about 2006, but it's what in today's parlance you would call a Nespresso machine. <laughs> and it, uh, it just sort of, uh, you know, like, oh, like Kevin from Harry Enfield, just that sort of called deflation. And then he's like, uh, you, know, you know what, it, this isn't going to work out. And that was us. Uh, but the good news from my point of view was uh, I got my two hours and that meant that because I've been working for this agency for a while, uh, I'd made my half day off. So uh, I got paid for the two hours there and I took the rest of the days a half day. So I still got paid. Just didn't have any work for the rest of the week. <laughs> got yourself Get... a holiday. <laughs> Actually... Drew, after getting to know Greg Fowell, I'm actually inclined to think he maybe have done that on purpose. <laughs> a fucking evil mastermind. <laughs> it's a good film going at the cinema. No, no, I've uh, worked with uh, PR agencies. Uh, they're not the sort of people you want on the wrong side. Hmm. Um, uh, my, my good friends at uh, Level 5, Jim Daynor, Stephen Kerr, you do magnificent work. Uh, keep it up. They'll testify. <laughs> oh, your question. Question time. This one's quite funny. Who's the biggest arsehole you've ever met at a convention? Who wants to go first on that one? Oh, oh, I'll take this one. Um, on far of uh, a certain Marvel feature, no, I wouldn't say a star, he, he gets credited at the beginning, put it that way. <laughs> Who, he may or may not be related to the director of said feature or may not have done TV work. Um, but this guy, let's see, Zirin, he was complaining that the bottled water is at room temperature. Ooh. And Nothing at the table could do about that. Well, no, I didn't bring my cooler with me, so uh, when someone goes by, we'll see if we can put it in the fridge. Uh, yeah, that, yeah that, that about takes the cake for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, if you would ask anybody else that question, they'd probably say me. No. Oh. Oh, fucking biggest awful. Um, I can't even answer that without alienating anybody. To, to be an honest, to give you an honest answer, I'll tell you. The, probably the recently the nice way. I'll, I'm going to speak about this in the, the I don't know about why. The and I've got to be honest with you. The nicest guy I've recently met. I mean, like recently, like imminently, like like just be not that long ago would probably be Ian Beatty. You know, for Game of Thrones because you know what I mean. 
what a lovely bloke, you know. This guy is so appreciative of his fans. Within the first five minutes of meeting him, the first conversation, somebody come over, asked for a certain favour, uh, and he's like, ah, oh, for fuck's sake, man, he says, you wouldn't have kidding, you were born. And he's such a, just kind of having a laugh with him. Eh? And um, I thought, you'll do me, big man. I'm not going to say word for word, but uh, we have a chat with him, and obviously with uh, his talk, you know, well, it's streamed live, so I mean, everybody got to see it. Um, you can actually see yourself first hand. You don't have to just take your word for it, you know. Just how that's this is how the guy is generally in real life. So, a lovely, lovely guy. In contrast, just recently had a, a, a different experience with uh, another person who will go unnamed. I won't, I won't, I won't call them out because it could have been having a bad day, it could have been anything, but I was sitting at the bar at the end of the night in the guest hotel and I'm talking to uh, one chap here who from America who deals with like some artists and stuff and then he comes over uh, Mike Offwhite he used to be a, a like an ex-policeman and he was injured in the line of duty so we're chatting away I says I asked him says what can happen and was, I'm asking him I want to, I want to hear what happened to him and everything so he's telling me He's telling me about you know what happened and everything along those lines and how you know injured his neck and everything like that. Um, and I was like, oh, bloody hell, man! And um, so lo and behold, all we heard was, "But what about me?" He says, "What do we do?" And I'm like, oh, "What?" Okay, this is coming for somebody else over in the far corner who, incidentally, was somebody who I won't say who it was. But what do we do? And I've looked over, pissed as a fart. Eh. But in the conversation, the mic might have been a wee bit, I wouldn't say he was being loud, eh? but um, it was maybe, you know, it wasn't whispering either, you know. And it was almost like, you know, mate, you know, you, um, you, there's no need for that, you know what I mean? Can okay, just mind you in bloody business and his, his manners. So that really kind of got me back up a wee bit, you know. Um, so I, I wouldn't say he was the biggest, the biggest arsehole, but he certainly didn't, didn't sell any favours, so that was maybe... So we all, we all have good days, bad days, up days, down days. Um, but, you know, the demon drink, like, can sometimes, you know, it's maybe a good idea up here at a time, and maybe be funny, but the time it comes out of your mouth, you know, it's probably a low store sense of humour and everything. And we're kind of like, oh, and needless to say, we kind of up and left quite quickly because we're just kind of like, yeah, I'll see them one later. Uh, so that's probably, probably answer that question. Without naming anybody, because let's say I wouldn't say in terms of naming anybody, because we all, like I say, we all have good days, we all have bad days, um, and it's really no my place to be judged during execution when it comes to somebody else's life as such. What I can say is, for your personal experiences, you can say, well, I'll, I'll, I'll happily deal with them again. Them maybe not so much because you know it's flying a bit close to the wind and that's about the best you can do you know you can and if anybody else like my friends um like in different countries and that, that run their own um shows and conventions if they're ever recommending it but they'll go well why don't you have such and such a guest because i tell you what he was doing his panel right and he had them on fits of laughter and everything and you know, I popped in by time to time just to go past his table and I tell you what, the cues were whatever and, you know, he was so appreciative and he took the time and everything. So, I, I'd recommend him. And if they say, yeah, well, what about such and such a guy? Well, you know, it's up to you. I can't really say yes or no. Um, and you might sort of, you know, highlight a couple of things just to say, like, we well, might want to keep that, but you never, ever, ever... Um, it's like getting a, get a CV, you would rather, you know, I would rather, I would rather push the good people. And when it comes to people that have maybe not been overly or more to be, maybe gone, well, it could, it could be anything, you know, it could be anything. But, you know, it's like, it's, it's like they'll say, and even come from my point of view, from my point of view, imagine it's very similar from my point of view for the guests, you know what I mean? Um, I mean, the guests who came to me, like, uh, from a first year at Port of O, where it was like flipping lukewarm water and that, you know what I mean? So there's, I mean, like I'm trying to think who was there the first year. Um, like Angus McInnes was there the first year at Port of o, right? 
So he's come along and the attendance was, well, it was pretty piss poor to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, but he came back the second year. Came back the second year and they put in a good performance for him. They got a good footfall got through the door and everything along those lines. So for, for somebody like that to take a leap of faith for you, to come along to your first show um, and then to come back, you know, when you've really got the ball rolling, a bit of momentum underneath you, and that's really appreciated. And like for the ball of my heart, I was really appreciated, and that speaks a lot about a person. Um, and I can tell you, for sitting uh, having a meal, like a, the guest meal, and that, and chatting to Angus, uh, what a gem a bloke! Like what a proper, proper, a proper gent a bloke. Uh, so that's so, so. Rather than say, to, rather than say, who's the biggest arse, who's the biggest fan? I would probably, mm, I'd rather push the positive people and just go on, well, such and such, well, maybe they're not for me, for whatever reason, just because, you know, I could, like you say, cause it could be anything, you know. Uh, you can only ever, when you have an experience with somebody, you can only ever judge it on that experience, you know. I mean, you can you can try and be more clever than what you are. Anyway, but rather than ramble on, I hope that kind of answers a question in a funny way. Yeah, I don't really have a big list of people, uh, not done that many conventions, so I'll put it into context for me. So podcast episodes, uh, Duck Benedict was an absolute arsehole. Mm. So fuck you, Duck Benedict. Um, you Ball is an absolute arsehole, so fuck you, you Ball, and any time you want to fight, I will actually fight you, because he offered to fight me. <laughs> Uh, and that uh, for comic book conventions, that laptop guy's a bit of a cunt. Oh, aye, aye, yes. I think I can you're talking about. Aye. Um, I've had, I've had um, you know, uh, experiences. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say too much, you know. Um, that, that, that person you're talking about, if they're Actually, after my first convention, I mean, I get the, the attendance was piss poor, so nobody was lying. By the way, it's not like it's not like anyone was lying, but you no, know, the show wasn't even over, it wasn't even finished by three three minutes. Literally, if you go into Facebook, the timestamp was like three minutes after the door shut, and it's slagging us off on Facebook, and I'm like, ah, right, okay, fair enough. You know, you're entitled to your opinion. You know, as last last I checked, there was a free country and freedom of speech and that, but I thought to myself. You know, I've been in a similar position when the shoes have been on my feet and I've been at, you know, your event, you know, but I didn't really make too much of a big thing about it. Um, so that's that's one of those things. Uh, to go on, to go and then come back to me later on and ask me if I want to exhibit any of these events and pay them money. I'm like, oh, I'd rather know. I'd rather know. And fair enough, like I said, I mean, fair enough, when, when somebody went on, it's not like he was lying. I mean, he might have been telling the truth, can't I mean? Had a shit show. You know what I mean? But it was like, kind of like, fucking, you know, three minutes after the event. And it's almost like it was premeditated, like fucking planned it. That's what it felt like at the time. Anyway. It's not like you ran a show in the same town in the same venue as him. What's that? It's the opposite side. You you ran a show on the opposite side of the fucking country from where he runs his. So it's not even it's in, not like it's the same venue and he has a fucking grip over that venue. It's just a total wanker move. Maybe his motives were different. You know, it's hard to. You can't really. I can't. I can only judge by the words that were written on the paper, you know what I mean? Uh, the motives behind it would be speculation. Although speculation seem there seem to be a general consensus consensus among everybody that read it. You know, that didn't jump in the bandwagon like you. I mean well, people people were right though and people were they weren't they wrong. Listen, the first show that we done, it was it was it was dead. You know, so the people that came back to us for the second show to exhibit were brilliant. You know what I mean? So if I was going to have loyalty to anybody, they would get more loyalty. 
the ends that said fuck you uh, uh, useless you can't even show or whatever like that or anything along those lines you know, there's one or two of them um, definitely entitled to their opinion you know what I mean but for them to come back later on um, and ask for a table they probably wouldn't get as much consideration as what the people who came back to uh, straight back uh, try to be politically correct about that and you know misconstrue they would never want to talk to me okay, I'm very open you know what I mean I'm plastered you know very you know social media plastered here and I kind of go to all the meets and I go to places and I, when I'm at the shows like I walk on the tables and speak to everybody so you know it's not like um, it's not like you know I go away and hide in an office so anybody want, ever wants to say anything they can come ask and speak to me you know plain as day you know plain English you know black and white sort of thing um, but I wouldn't get too hung up on a lot of things, you know. And you know, new, you know, uh, once bitten, twice shy. You know what I mean? So I would never really, you know. What's all saying? How's all saying go? Fill me once, shame on you. Fill me twice. So um, I would never do, never do business with that particular said person ever again you know what i mean and i did uh, so i was very supportive of a lot of things not just um taking tables but also um like taking adverts in certain things and sponsoring some of the awards at the, the ceremonies and stuff which you know i suppose that sounds a bit better than what it was because at the time it wasn't a hell of a lot of money you know but still it was money that i could have been better spent on someone mm. else because I took my kids out with me. Anyhow, I'm not going to give you too much. I'm not going to give you too much, by the way, right? Dick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an arsehole, what can I say? Uh, next question, what is on your pull list? I don't even know what's on my pull list. Does anyone... Oh, fucking loads of my pull list, but Greg... Uh, well, when I was on holiday, I was reading a series by Isaac Asimov uh, called Foundation. Uh, now, 1960, not in a lot of people's cool list. But, um, terrific series of books. Uh, it's, this is my second time reading through them. Um, and understand that HBO has picked it up, and apparently Tom Hanks is involved in some way. So, I suppose it's like, uh, dare I say it, Game of Thrones or Sex in the City. Uh, you know, you might not have heard of it now, but, you know, two or three years' time, when HBO mm -hmm. did the programme, you know, it might be a different story then. But uh, fantastic books. Uh, I wouldn't hesitate to recommend them. Did you say cool list or pool list? Pool. Oh, but yeah, pool. Either, pool. either goes. Oh, either goes. I think, I think I've actually got some of mine sitting round about here. Uh, this is just stuff I ain't bagged and boarded yet. So, like, I was reading that, if you can see it. That. Big John, my little China. Aye, it's I was reading that. Like, that's about the only Marvel book I pick up. Uh -huh. uh, that's just finished, I think. So I'm reading that. Oh, aye. Uh -huh. I think I'm about three issues behind on that, and I was doing them. Aye. Uh, I picked this up when I was in Italy. Uh, I can get that to not have a fucking shine on it. Morgan Last. Morgan Lost. Yeah, it's, it's in Italian, which is helpful for me, not being able to fucking read Italian, but it's pretty cool. Nice, yeah. Why the fuck would you buy a comic written in Italian if you can't read Italian? It looked cool. I like to try and think of myself as cultured, but really it just it looked cool. And it's got pretty pictures inside. <laughs> no, fair play. I suppose what about you? Uh, in terms of polis, I'm reading absolutely anything. I tend to read anything I can get my hands on. Obviously, there are loads of books coming in. You know, things melting up for all the time. At the moment, I've been reading uh, The Wildstorm. Uh, well, I'm just rebooting The Wildstorm because it wasn't that long. A storm watch, there we go. Aye, lovely, jubbly. 
Um, because, well, it wasn't that long ago I just started reading Authority. You know what I mean? So I was like, well, I was like, everybody kept on going on about it. And it was one of those books that was like a, a something I had to say, oh, I'll get it yet, I'll get on to it. So I got the collected trade. Uh, but the book one, I've not got book two. I think I think book two, where it starts off is when Mark Miller came on. Is that yeah. right? Warren uh, yeah. in Hitch for the first 12 issues. Uh, Mark Miller, uh, various artists uh, for the second volume. There is a gap uh, <coughs> for on the original run. It was issues 19 and 21 to 27. Right. Uh, it's very, very messy, but uh, there is 12 Mark Miller issues in there somewhere. Okay, I mean, well, there's authority. So, I mean, that's where I've been enjoying, uh, like, Wildstorm. There's, it's like, how can you say Because it's rebooting, you're seeing characters who I have had previous experience with, characters who I just got experience with from starting to read authority. You know, ones that I keep on getting mixed up. Like, the engineer, I keep on thinking, that is danger for the X-Men. And I'm like, shut up, James. You know, but it's just because of the... You know the the element. You know the, the similar, similar in character nature. Uh, so Wild Storm, X Men Gold and Blue, uh, because I'll, I'm a big X Men fan. Um, there's that flopping much going on with X Men all the time. So it's kind of try to stay on top of it. Okay, it's yeah. like all new X Men, extraordinary X Men, uncanny X Men, uh, and that sort of change now. Now it's like X Men Blue, X Men Gold. Just been solicited, was it last month, issue one, uh, the new Astonishing X-Men volume. Right. So, I've, obviously I'm in for that. Uh, there's the new Generation X stuff, who's like the, oh, um, how could I say it? It's like uh, the X-Men who are only very good looking. You know, it's other ones that are kind of like, oh, the X-Men like with the club feet and the kind of straight hair and the couple of teeth and all that. Um, sorry, Greg. Grant Morrison's X Men. A uh, new X Men by Grant Morrison. Why? Uh huh. You remember how you had like the teachers? Uh, it was Jean Grey and Wolverine and Cyclops and the rest of it, and you had Zorn taking. Uh, I can't remember the language that they used. It was on like special focus class, but it was like beak. And uh, the guy with the two heads, and just uh, they were mutants, so Professor X had to take them in, but they just weren't very good. <laughs> that sort of notion. Uh, uh, that was, um, what was that? Just, it's just you get your, um, who was that again? The, uh, sorry, you go. Was that his name? The kid Omega. Was oh, kid, kid. The Edge one. Kid, kid Omega's cool as fuck. He's really cool. But what the people? <laughs> He's like, I used to love it because I remember I met um, was it Jason Avon was writing Wolverine and X Men. And you no, know, I've went up to him and I've got him to sign some of the stuff. And I said, listen, I'm really enjoying your Wolverine versus X Men, especially. Um, no, uh, Kid Omega, because he really, uh, he relates to it. I love him. He's like, pull out the people. He's like, come to revolution. Like, come to revolution. I gotta do this. And by the way, big man, Wolverine, you're getting it first. And you're kind of like, what? And he's just kind of looking at me. This kind of blank look. Was it, you know, thought, was it Thought Bubble? Must have been, I don't know, 2013, maybe? Um, something like that. He's, just kind of, he was sitting in, uh, was it the Royal Armouries Hall, maybe? The, the big hall. And he's kind of, for the back of the table, kind of just looking up with this blank look. And then, you know, the guys translated it to him. Okay. I was like, ah, he's like, he's like, he's like a super powered Citizen Smith. You know, <laughs> it's like, what are you talking about? I just, I was just talking shit to him. But um, I was, I just, what a great time to have people like Jason Aaron and all that kind of writing comic stuff. Just mental, man. Probably. Mm. Especially writing superhero comics or not. Mm. Uh, so I think so there's that. X-Files, obviously reading X-Files. Reading Blue Beetle, reading Batman. Um, 
been reading a lot of catching up on a lot of uh, the Green Lanterns, you know, with Simon Baz and uh, Jessica Cruz. Um, so I've been reading that because that was pretty cool having the two of them, you know, the sort of like the two of them bumps off each other. Uh, I've not really read a lot of Flash in the past, but recently I've read like the f shitload, like fair issue one up to about the early 20s. Just so I could read it in with uh, Batman, so I could get a proper appreciation of the button sort of thing. So I knew what was going on there. Um, which is funny actually, because I've got a pile of detective comics there and some Batman stuff to catch up on as well. But getting double shipped, it's like they're piling up really quickly. Hmm. Um, what are the books? If anything, you can put it out. I'm just, I'm half, I'm starting to read it before became on air. Uh, it was like a, a special Lobo versus the Roadrunner. It's funny as fuck. It's really funny. Um, what else? It's just, I know it's metal. Um, what else? Uh, in terms of indie stuff, uh, I've just started actually for last year. It was one of the nominations for, the, in fact, talking about um, the Southern Bastards. Because it was one of the, the books that was put forward for the Ancestry Awards, and I was like, "Shit, I better get when you're reading that. I better get when you're reading it." So, I picked up um, the, the first trade. We got a, like a, a consignment of them in, and I have to say, I've never read it. It was so engaging. I read it from cover to cover without putting it down, and I was like, "This is this is pure brilliant." So, needless to say, uh, Volume Two and Volume Three, Lord, I put in for them. What else? Anything, man. I mean, you it'd probably be easier for somebody to, to, to say something, man. If I've not read it, I've probably flicked through it at some point. Um, I started reading Grant Morrison's 18 Days, mm. you know, sort of the super powered um, Indian type thing. When I mean India, I don't mean Native American, I mean Indian, you know. Uh, and that was, that was actually really good, but. For some reason, it just it was really good, but I just seemed to kind of mm, I didn't have enough time to really, you know, commit myself to this when there's other books there I want to read. And I find it's really in terms of my monthlies, my floppies and pull lists. It's usually like my X titles, um, my Batman, my my. my Blue Beetle and stuff like that. Um, Lucifer, which I've got to catch up on. I'm, I'm quite a good few issues behind there, but I've got to catch up on that. So these sort of things, and I try and catch up on the rest of them uh, via trades or stuff. Or uh, even then, sometimes like uh, the Comicsology has got sales on. Sometimes even hammer that because mm. yeah, you know I've got the the tablet with me. 24 hours a day. People are always tell me, you know, try to phone in your mobile phone, but you had it turned off. I'm like, I'm the world's worst for that, pal. Says, but I've got my tablet with me 24 7. Just ping me. Just ping me and you'll get me straight away. And you need it. If it's important, just ping me. I go, all right. And because I've got the tablet with 24 7. So the amount of time, you, you basically you've got a whole library of comic books there. I always wondered uh, when like digital comics first came out to begin with, I thought myself, How's this going to affect people reading comics? It's never affected me at all in any form or manner whatsoever. No. You know, um, the only thing that's affected me buying comic books is flipping the price of them. Um, bearing in mind when we started reading comic books back in the day, and I'm not just talking about the Britishians, but, but we used to go into the shops and I think Comag were the distributors at the time before like Diamond started getting the comic shops. You're talking about like 60 pence for like a comic book or something like that. So you could, if you quid, if, you, if you're, it all depends at the time how much Pokemon you go at, because I was kind of young at the time. Uh, but you, you know, you know you're talking what, a couple of quid a book, eh? you know, like two, three quid a book. And you know, if you have a young kid, you know, no other young, no other parents go kind of, they kind of just throw money at the kids to buy comic books as much as they'd like. Eh? Uh, and um, so that's why, for children's, actually, for children's point of view, I'd have to say things like Marvel Unlimited 
you know, the digital subscription service. Yeah. Fucking fantastic. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. 30 quid, 40 quid a year. And you get access to all these comics, like, boom, straight off. And then from my point of view, it's brilliant as well because there's shitloads of stuff. Because you can't possibly have read everything. Eh? But you'll find yourself with time to kill for time to time. And you can just go into kind of like Marvel Unlimited and just go <laughs> pop something up, boom, boom, boom. Next thing you can, a bit of time's passed, and then uh, you've, you've, you've fired through whatever. And you can, you can, that's a bit different than because Scotville have got free Wi Fi on uh, the trains going through Glasgow to Edinburgh and that. So I can do it a little easier, but before I used to download like about six titles. Yeah. So you could download the six titles, store them on your, your tablet for reading, for going through or whatever. Uh, but now you can just bloody boom, boom, fire through them all. Uh, but that's that's maybe the, the, the digital subscription thing is maybe good for kids to get exposure to um, some of the classics uh, at an affordable price, you know, and it's maybe good as well for people like myself, like say for like the youngest gen, he's taken a real poncho for comic books um, and for like superhero stuff and you're saying to him, well, if you want to read that, pal, that comic staying inside this mile or bag but it's bored and you're not getting your hands on it. However, there's the tablet, I wait and read it. So it's, it's kind of safe, you know. And then when it gets older, maybe you can take it out and have a look at it and that. Um, but some of these, you know, obviously, you know, it's weird. Comics are for reading, man. I mean, but at the same time, though, okay, I mean, you think to yourself, okay, that, that, that book could be okay. Worth a penny or two. I don't know what to get ripped because, you know, yeah, it's just me. I just like see anyone that likes comic books should check out terraformer.net where we have the school of the dam getting serialized. <laughs> Good man, uh huh. Fucking cheap plug. <laughs> Why no? Yeah, fuck it. Oh, question. Oh, this uh, this one's actually quite stupid. Uh, who could you punch fuck out of, out of this list? Hulk Hogan, Steven Seagal, Angela Merkel. Who wants to go first? <laughs> um, which era of Hulk Hogan are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Let's go modern day. Um, is a golf ball? Um, or you know, is it going to be the you know WCW situation where uh, one falls, I take the title, and then Vince Russo comes out and, and screams his head off. <laughs> More detail before I hopefully answer that. Okay, <laughs> James. Um. Let me think about it. Right, um, who, who was it said? Who would I like to, or who could I, or what? Who could you? Who could I? Ah, right, no. Hmm. Aye, ah, right, fair play. I reckon I could probably take Merkel, you know. Oh, fucking hell, man, picking on the woman, eh? Um, <laughs> Hulk Hogan, um, Aye, aye, you'd, you'd fucking, I'd, I'd probably have, you know, it depends if Mean Gene came as out to back him up, you know what I mean? Uh, ooh, and Macho Man Randy Savage, ooh, cup of coffee! Uh, but, um, fucking, Steven Seagal, oh, fucking, uh, uh, I like Steven Seagal, I fucking, I've always had a soft spot for Seagal, to be honest with you, a lot of um, his stuff. For a lot of different things for um, my first exposure to some of his movies like Hard to Kill and Nico and Mark for Death, Not for Justice and all that sort of stuff and then he does other things like the uh, Glamour Man and um, like Fire, Do Fire Down Below actually, it's, I actually really like that film um, 
and some is fucking shite, utter piss drivel streak to video digital crap, which I think it was a result of his relationship with Naso going tits up because Naso was fucking in bed with fucking the Gotti family or something like that. And they're trying to muscle in and extortion and stuff. And Sagal's basically turned in and went, fuck you. Yeah. Also, or something like that. Also, he had a lot of legal fees to pay for when he slapped his missus about, allegedly. Sagal did. allegedly, yeah. Hmm. I see, there's a thing. Did he? Because we're talking about who Kelly Brock. Mm-hmm. So, what? He, what, at what point in the relationship did he slap her about? Uh, I believe it's supposed to be just before the split. But well, I've, never, it, I've, it, <laughs> I've never seen any pictures of her, you know, black and blue or, you know, I mean, it's not like it's it's not as clear cut maybe as like, a, I don't know, Johnny Depp allegedly situation <laughs> where there's actually photographic evidence. Uh, but you never know. Aye. Uh. Fucking, I mean, God, I, I don't really can. It's hard to, what's they say that, you know, with Sagal's run-ins with other people, that somebody's no fucking paid her? I'm not saying that's happened, by the way, because I don't know. And anybody that lays a fucking hand on a woman um, in a gratuitous manner, or just because you're pissed off at them, um, is an arsehole, you know what I mean? If one of them attacks you, fucking, you know, it's a different kettle of fish, by the way, because they can hurt you just as much as anybody that's under the illusion that a woman can't hurt you is a stupid, naive person, to be perfectly honest with you, and they should wake up, smell the coffee, and see, it's because a woman can hurt you just as much as mm. anybody else, you know, and one of my good friends lost his eye to a lassie, you know what I mean, they're still little heel, so, um And it game's up until that point. Oh, What? Um, <laughs> aye, aye, you forgot your safe word there. <laughs> Still a little straight there. Ah! Magpie! Oh, that's it! It's oh, too late there. Um, no, but seriously, so. Uh, Keller, Keller, I mean, between Seagal and Keller Bolt, then I, you know, but. I'd, 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 you know, it's, I'd, it's hard to really kind of. Hard to really, it's, it'd be purely speculation on my point, and anything I could say to it would be completely academic. And I think sometimes we like to point the finger at people and go, fucking look at you, and look at you, and it's, it's, I could only, I could only make my judgment on people by, well, I could only make my, base my opinion on people by what I know of them. Mm -hmm. You know, so the way he, for the way Pesagal was portrayed, you know, and like some of the ways he's, like the, some of the, the, a lot of his films, can you help write them? So this had to come from a certain place, you know what I mean? And I could say he's a Buddhist, you know what I mean? Or, you know, the thing about the peace and whatever, but then again, you know, I well, can uh, it's like a fucking, I don't know, it's like the Catholic Church fucking printing a touch and feel book in it, you know what I mean? <laughs> that's, by the way, that's, 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 that's bad in the world, by the way, because my nana was a good practicing. Stop it. Stop it. I've just lost a lot. Uh, I could, I could be the fuck at Hulk Hogan because he's old as fuck. Mm. Angela Merkel's short as fuck, so it'd be like fighting a dwarf, so it's not really much competition. Just to put your hand in her head while you're punching her, she can't reach you. Uh... <laughs> That's an image in it. Uh, Steam Seagal's fake as fuck, so I could beat him up. Yeah, Aikido's bullshit. He's done a lot more than just Aikido, like it, but. Yeah, he's at some burgers, you know. He's what? Yep. He's had some burgers or not? Hi. He played a guy in Ferry about 10 years ago, I'll have you know. What's that? He played a guy in Glasgow on the Renfrew through Ferry. Oh, playing the, the, the stuff. Aye, he's good. Mm. 
I don't mm. think. I don't think Seagal's totally fake. You know, I can't even listen. You know, mm. then again. What? Oh, Jesus Christ. Which one of the proclaimers is the sexy proclaimer? What the fuck are these questions like? <laughs> I don't even know what their actual names are. I just know the band's called the Proclaimers. Um, is it? Um, I think their names are Craig and Charlie. Okay. There is one of them that had a six-month-long affair with one of the groupies. Uh, I, I can't remember the, the story, but... Um, uh, they were playing a, a, a small town. Uh, they were booked into the same hotel on the account of it being the only hotel in town. And, like, you know, uh, matters took their own course. But given that that story was in the paper about him and not the other one, I'm going to have to say him based on his track record. Can I just ask a quick question? Mm-hmm. Yes. What's their surname? Is the surname Proclaimers? Because it's fucking, that's really... Nope. <laughs> no. Like, t- That's like a myth for that, isn't it? Like, in t- Thomas, I mean, imagine, like, registry at school. What was their first names again? Craig and Charlie. Craig and Charlie? Yeah. Craig Proclaimer? Yeah, miss. Charlie Proclaimer, yeah, miss. That's kind of. It does actually. Actually, it rolls with the tongue we bees than what I thought. I, was. <laughs> um, I thought it was only someone there. Right, my, right, my evil assistant's just there supplied me with it. Um, does anyone want to guess? Smith. Not quite. Uh, Brown, I don't know why. <laughs> No, come on, put us out. Just put me out of my miserable life. Come on. Name a furniture shop. I'll give you a clue. It's not SCS. It's not SCS. DFS. Oh, sorry. It's Reed. Reed? Yeah. I suppose it'd be more likely to be Reed than MFI. MFI about a business, didn't I? Yeah. IKEA! A good Scottish name, that? IKEA? No, sorry, but I know you'd die. Okay. Craig Reed. Yep. Hmm. This is probably why no one knows their names. Because it's such regular names. Well, I don't think they felt the need to change their name because of show business. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> eh? Well, the Ramones did, but, you know, Craig Kramer doesn't have the same, uh, the same appeal as Johnny Ramone or Joey Ramone, to be fair. So what was the Ramones' first surname? What was the real surname? Uh, they all had different surnames, uh, and you know what, I can't for the life of me remember any of them offhand. Hang on a minute, are you going to tell me that the Vaughan Moons weren't ever laid? Uh, I'm afraid they weren't, no. All oh, these years, eh? Uh, All oh, these years. Uh, Fucking fly, eh? Oh, fly. But it would have been amazing if uh, they were, and after, uh, let's see which one left. Uh, Tommy Ramon definitely left for a while. Um, so it would have been amazing if they managed to get like a brother who was also a drummer uh, to stand in. <laughs> oh, no, I've been supplied with uh, their uh, names here. Right, so Joey Ramon's real name was Jeffrey Hyman. Uh, oh, hi, are you okay? <laughs> uh, Johnny Ramon, his real name is jo- Jonathan Cummings. Well, <laughs> Cummings and Hyman. Oh, this is comedy gold. <laughs> okay. For those of you. I don't know if you've seen a Saturday Night Live sketch that Peter Dinklage did uh, with Gwen Stefani. 
Is that the end where he's dressed up in the space suit and he's... No. Yes, it is. Space pants. Space pants. Yeah. And his character name in that is Jonathan Cummings. <laughs> and he's space pants. Uh, Didi Ramon's original name was Douglas Colvin. And Tommy was Thomas Erdelier. So there we go. Right. I thought we were going to be on your a winning streak there. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, Jesus Christ, I'll skip that one. Let's skip that one. <laughs> hi, hi, pop fans. Hi, pop fans. What comic book related movies are you looking forward to? In the next year or two. Right. Who wants to go first? Uh, after seeing Wonder Woman, I've got renewed hope for Justice League. Fair uh, play. Mm-hmm. When I saw Dawn of Justice, I just had no hope for it. And understand that Zack Snyder is not going to be part of Justice League film now. So, uh, whatever else happens, I'm, I'm, I'm holding out a wee bit more hope uh, for it than I did had he still been attached. Uh, so, Justice League uh, has to be a big one. Uh, other than that, um, probably Thor, Ragnarok. Oh, uh-huh. Aye. Um, and the uh, Avengers movie, the next Avengers movie, obviously, because part will be filmed in Edinburgh, so that's quite be good, nice to have a wee watch of. And also, there's actually, I, t- I don't even know if it's out yet or it should be out imminently. Um, it's not a cinema release, but they're doing a uh, web movies, web TV show type thing for the Valiant properties. Mm-hmm. Um, and what's his face, Jason? What's his thing? I'll be <laughs> that, that Power Ranger bloke. What's his name again? Uh, Jason David Frank. Jason David Frank. I think he's um, going to be Bloodspot in it. Uh, so there's a Bloodspot, Bloodshot, Blood, 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 Blood Valiant as uh, Bloodshot. A blood sport. Fucking the right shop. Um, so he's got to be. In, I did not really read this Jason David Frank that much. As I don't really know him for uh, anything else. I put for the Power Rangers and the Power Rangers to me was. I, I, I never really could get into the Power Rangers why people had, had such a massive following because it was the same formula. Matic episode, episode, episode. Eh? Everything was Power Rangers fight bad guy, beat bad guy. Bad guy goes big, Power Rangers get into the power suits and they become Mechazoid or whatever the hell it is. Bang, bang, bish, bosh. They win. It just seemed to me that like every episode was the same as the DM before. I just couldn't, from my point of view, it didn't do it for me. Um, it's not to say, you know, that the guy's not going to you know, embody the like the, the, the Valiant stuff, so maybe I'll put a good turn in for that, but I want to see how it turns you out. see the ponytail guy? Who's that? Steven Seagal? No. <laughs> the guy you were talking about. We see like the, the green one or the white one or whatever. He was definitely Green Ranger for a while. Right. I, I know that. So did, did he have a ponytail? Uh, no, I think he no. had uh, the spiky hair. Right. I don't. I don't know the names of any of them. I know one of the people that was in the Power Rangers went on to become a uh, mixed martial artist. I think I know that uh, Jason David Frank did do some mixed martial arts. Get five minutes. Get five minutes. Drew's got to tell us. Well, I'd kick kiss cunt in, and I'd well. kick and 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 she'd get her, I know. And see that. <laughs> and you see that pink kitten, by the way. What was she? Or was she? Yeah, she because uh, I remember when that uh, wrestler CM Punk was going to do UFC, that was one of the people that was mentioned to fight him. All right. 
with Jason David Frank or got to fight CM mm -hmm. Punk? Okay. To be fair, I'm thinking a wet paper bag would still have knocked him the fuck out. Which one? CM Punk. Right, okay. My fucking dog could have beat him up and it's a cockapoo. A, a cockapoo? Is that a mixed breed, that? Aye, cocker spaniel and poodle. So, not exactly butch. <laughs> <laughs> That'd have been some right nasty shit they two getting doing there. You could just fucking see it. Lit candles and Barry White records, man. <laughs> a fucking cocker spaniel and a poodle. Look into a bar. Oh, I used to be poodles. There used to be. We used, used to stay back in a uh, bit man and avenue and number three. There used to be. The old neighbour across the road, um, she had these two poodles and fucking, he used to walk past the gear and they used to come running out. And they're like that. You look at them like that, they were like flipping wee white curly vermin, man, but their eyes underneath they were like all black and everything. I thought, I did to see that thing with rabies, man. Can't imagine it's foaming at the mouth. You, you would, I'm not being funny, but this wee thing, you would, I, I don't know about you, but I would probably cack it. You can see it coming running at you, but like, mm. uh, it's bolt. The same bolt. Is that the the one comic related thing you are looking forward to? What the comic book thing about? So no, I, well, I say Dave probably probably. I'm looking forward to see what the valiant thing looks like to see what it's like, you know, just just because of sheer interest, because it's a uh, another publisher. Who's getting their stuff out there? Um, because the amount of good licensed stuff there there is to get out mm. in the publication or get into um, to, just to get on screen. And it doesn't help. I mean, I mean I, I'd like to see a lot more of the mostly like with had like preacher done before Dogcast done. I'd like to see some more uh, like non. Uh, like the non super, I want to keep seeing the superhero stuff getting done and getting done well, but I want to see a lot of the other properties getting done and getting put out there and done properly. You know what I mean? Um, after beating Southern Bastards, that would make I'd be probably I want to see that. I want to see that up there. Um, other things, um, I'm just try to think some going to bitch planet would probably make quite a Mm. A good sci-fi uh, show or something like that. Quite a bit, but just a bit different. Huh? So much, just so much. But I'm definitely want to see Avengers. Yeah, that's what I'm looking forward to. Avengers. Yeah. Try not to get remotely excited about the new Spider-Man because there's been so many of them, and for me, they've all been shit. I've not yeah. liked any of the Spider-Man movies yet. <laughs> But I get excited before them, then I go and see them, then I bitch about them, and then the next one comes out and I get excited about it and go and see it. So I'm trying not to and just go with the flow on this one. See, I really want to see I really I really want to see Fantastic Four going back to Marvel. And I want to see yeah. Marvel running with the the king, grabbing the ball and running with it and doing a proper Fantastic Four movie. There's this talk about them rebooting the Fantastic Four film again and doing something younger. I and mean, I've seen the headline. Um, I didn't even bother clicking on it because anything getting produced on the screen for Fantastic Four that's no go influence or anything ties to Marvel, I'm just not interested in it. I don't care. You know, I really have not got, I just didn't care. And yes, I'd probably like to see Fantastic Four back in comics and stuff, but to be perfectly honest with you, I fully appreciate where they're coming from. Mm. It's maybe no, it's not. It's, I wouldn't even say. I don't even. It's a spiteful thing or anything. Some people say, "Oh, but I'm kind of like you know, fucking." Why should the uh, within the health day? Why should I suppose? Okay. It cheapens the brand, so it makes it more affordable for them when they buy it back. Maybe. Maybe I mean someday the 
there was the rumour in the past that because the folks make the X-Men TV shows that they've got to get Fantastic Four rights back for the screen and at the time on the face of it that seemed to make sense to um, a man of limited capacity like myself so it's like yeah but hey what can you do eh? I just know for I've never seen this new I've never seen that reboot that last Fantastic Four film no interest in it and I'm not even I'm not even going to play it I will never ever ever play it you know I'd rather watch the Roger Corman thing yeah, it's two hours of my life. I'll never get back. I saw it in the pictures. Um, I saw it on uh, a flight, and after they go to, is it the negative zone? I'm not sure. Let's call it the negative zone. After they, uh, I just thought they've also got Guy Ritchie's Man from Uncle. Let's just you know cut our losses and. Stick that on. Mhm. Mm yeah. I, I really enjoyed the man film call. So, mm -hmm. right. I, I was surprised by it because I went in with zero expectations. Uh, but I just thought, um, it's looks like two things: Guy Ritchie's practical interview for a James Bond film, uh, and a ninety-five minute long beer or after shave ad there, whatever. <laughs> uh, with it, with it, what was it? In the cool cars and all the rest of it. Uh, yeah, there's worse ways to pass your time. Yeah, for the Fantastic Four film, I just thought the whole time was, why is the thing played by fucking Billy Elliot? Yeah. It's like, what the fuck? Like, the <laughs> guy is the thing now? Would they get so angry because people picked on him doing Bali? Oh, wait, pigeonhole the guy, yeah. Fuck. Fuck else has he been in? Actually, a good point. I can't imagine being in anything. <laughs> no, I mean, probably because probably of people with attitudes like yours, Mr. Carson. I can think of one other thing I saw him in, and it was the King Kong, uh, Peter Jackson's King Kong. Right. He was in it. He was shit in it too. So I'm presuming, as I've now seen him in three films, and he's been equally shit in them. Well, Billy Elliot, he was a kid, so you can't really judge kid acting. So King Kong, Fantastic Four, he's been equally shit in. So, which, King, um, which King Kong which film was that? Which one? The one with Jack Black. What one's that? That came out 2005. Yeah. Ah, uh, right. No, nah, right, nah, okay. No, the thing that was just released, no, with that Kong no, thing. Sorry. No, no. That wasn't bad. I haven't seen it, sorry. It's not bad. Well, it's not bad. Uh, can't even... No. No. Peter Jackson won shit. When's Peter Jackson again? That's the 2005 one. You're, mm. you're just talking about it. Uh. Yeah, it's shit. Uh. Which is actually quite surprising because Peter Jackson's a fantastic director, you know. I mean, yeah. I think he, I think he's a really talented guy. Obviously, he done the, the Lord of the Rings stuff and that, and fuck, he probably wouldn't have to make a film again. Um, which I will depart if he's brain dead and uh, the other stuff he made, like back in the early days. Yeah. Yeah. Derek, Derek still in one. It really stunk of a film that had been taken away from a director and the studio was <laughs> doing the edit on it. That's what it felt like to me when you watch it, which is weird because after having that success, usually the studio doesn't fuck you over that big, but you never know. I guess every filmmaker has to make a shit one at some point. Oh, well, let's not, let's, let's, let's not kid ourselves, you know what I mean? Um, even your best comedians, man, you know what I mean? For all the good jokes they put, they must have to write a fucking shitload of shite jokes as well and test it and they'll just scrap the crap stuff you know what I mean until they find the stuff that hits the I mean there was it to say about the story for you know you've got to write what was it like a million shit stories just to get yeah but to get the good to get the crap stories out your system before something like that uh so I suppose even the to get into a good you know a good um a good run of things they'll still 
you know, probably slip up for time to time. Everybody was first. And then you'll get the same way actors as well, I suppose, you know, they'll make the good films and they'll like do some shitty films and uh, you'll probably have the guys that are they're quite happy to take chances on some of the films as well, just because of the con. Like Anthony Hawkins and the latest Transformers. <laughs> Aye, you know, it's uh, Anthony Hopkins is the latest trans. That was just mad. Uh, I just, you know, I can't wait for uh, Disney Lucasfilm to send them the cease and desist for the C three PO butler that he's got. Like, uh, that was just bizarre. Eh? Is that in Transformers? Yeah. Uh, Google him. The character's name is Cogman. Uh huh. He is basically C three PO. Right. He can run a bit faster, but apart from that, um, it's uh, it's a pretty shameless rip off. What's the other film that Anthony Hopkins is in? And he's is it was it was was seen a Mission Impossible film or something like that? Where he was the he was the the guy inside the cell and had to rescue him. And it turns out that he was. Fuck, what film was that again? If it was Silence of the Lambs, he didn't exactly rescue him from the set. <laughs> no, it wasn't the Silence of the Lambs. It was. He was like this. He, he was, he'd been stuck in the. Stuck in the, the bit for. Was it Red? Was it, he was seen Red too? No. No, I've not seen it, sorry. No, it wasn't um, Red too, was it? Could have been. That could have been Red too, yeah. Was it? What did I can't even mind, man. Oh, and Anthony Hopkins. Eh? Yeah. I don't, don't think I've ever seen it. I kind of avoid Bruce Willis movies because they've been shit for about 15 years. What was the last good film that Bruce Willis made? Uh, In your opinion? Don't know. <laughs> I can't think of one off the top of my head that's more recent than uh-huh. like Die Hard 3. <laughs> What do you say, Greg? One percent city, the first one. Mm. Artigan. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Was that before or after that hostage movie? Uh, Die Hard, I think it was sometime afterwards. No, he means the film Hostage. I actually know the guy that wrote that okay. film. Okay. Uh, was... Doug Richardson. Uh, I liked that. That was a good film. That I enjoyed that, that, it. that one's a good film. Yeah. It was a, a nice twist on the, that type of story as well, the way they ended it. So I like that film. Uh, was it 13 Blocks? Something like that. He's a washed up copper. And it's the Tash. Aye. That was pretty good, you know, stuff yeah. like that. Uh, I've never really seen much other stuff. I was in... Was it HMV or was it when I was in Asda? I think it was when I was in Asda. I saw a Bruce Willis movie on the shelf and it had Zach from Saved by the fucking Bell in it with <laughs> getting top billing. Zach, wait, 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 Zach again. Hmm? Wait, wait, Zach again. Uh, was that the blonde gene for Saved by the Bell? Aye, Bell-in? the blonde guy. It's like that guy's had no career for 20 years and he's getting top billing over Bruce Willis now. Uh, at least there wasn't a screech here. Uh, the last the last video of screech was on I think was probably a close circuit television uh, thing film committing some heinous crime he's on his down and or whatever it was Americans dumbest criminals or something or his supposed celebrity sex tape but he wasn't that famous at the time, so it's just the whole movie, really. <sighs> <laughs> that got a bit dark in the last couple of minutes, didn't it? <laughs> you've, just... Oh, you've just killed my train of thought, man. God, screech. <laughs> Divvy me. Divvy me. Uh, let's see, is there any more questions? Uh, 
that's those aren't remotely ones I would say out loud. So, <laughs> James, you do a podcast. Do you want to pimp that out? Well, the podcast we do is it's called Tila Talk, and it's really um, it's a compliment. We, th- we, do, we do it every Wednesday. We record every Wednesday night, try and get it up online almost immediately. Sometimes I end up sitting on it, depending on what's happened. Uh, it's really the three of us, myself, uh, Doug and Ian, uh, we just basically shoot the breeze, talking about everything, the uh, all geeky stuff, comic books, movies, and you know what have you. Uh, and the if you've been like to Edinburgh Comic Con, you'll probably notice that some of the panels have been like uh, he will talk in conversation with. So uh, initially, I think it was like last year, I sat in a couple of them, and this year I just let Doug uh, take uh, take the reins up. Uh, had other things to do at the time, uh, and also nine times out of ten, the guests couldn't understand the body what they were saying. <clears throat> so I was like, "Ah, oh, I tell you what, you just do it." You know, I think Siri would probably have a better chance of understanding me. You know, as soon as they come out with one of those uh, Star Trek Universal translators, I'll go back in the panel. I'll, tr- I'll translate for me to the Queen's English. <laughs> Uh, so uh, Hero Talks out on the Wednesday, yes, recording on the Wednesday, we put it up online. Um, you can get it on iTunes, Hero Talk Rebirth. You can uh, get it on Podbean, which is herotalkrebirth.podbean.com. Um, you can check out the social media side of things on facebook.com forward slash Hero Talk Rebirth. Uh, on Twitter at Hero Talk Rebirth. So it's one of these. Uh, but we've got a, a, a fairly reasonable present. Uh, the app, which has just been getting launched for Edinburgh Comic Con, where people can, you know, we've got the main website, but we thought to ourselves, do we have a mobile site, do we have an app? And the app just seemed to be so much more versatile because the amount of things you can do with them. So we'll, we'll hover the things that will be relevant to the con and then we'll hover like a part of it we can actually get all the, like the podcasts, the Hero Talk podcasts, and they were looking to put um, like some IPTV stuff up in it. So there'll be like sort of like the um, online TV stuff that we'll, we'll do, and that'll be like accessible via the app, which will be on like Google Play, uh, and they'll be live on iTunes like any day now. You know, yeah. Uh, there's just been the initial, you know, with this Google Play it was live in tours. iTunes takes something like two weeks or something like that to make it go live, which is just one of those things. Just the way it goes. Aye, but um, been a lot of fun. Uh, we've had a lot of different guests, and the, the initial incarnation of it was just basically Hero Talk, and it run for a good few years. We had quite a good few guests on it. People like for the world of comic books, we had Nombre Fogel on it. Um, we had Ivan Brandon on it. You know, we had like some really good comic creators. Um, we had people uh, like the the director of photography, for certain things they have feel like judgmenty, um a couple of things lined up. Um but then they changed basically presenters a wee bit. Uh, Mark Guy, he was one of the presenters we hear the stroke, unfortunately. Um he you know he's he had to spend time recovering uh, and his work as well. So he's he was kind of step. He took a step back just before his stroke, but he never came mm. back after because his works like he works in like tax and that. So it was like pretty stressful, especially with his commuting. Uh, so it didn't help him any. Um, so the three guys that so we just rebranded it. He would talk rebirth because at the time DC done rebirth. So it was yeah. kind of try to be topical and cool, you know. Uh, so that's basically the podcast. And Greg, when are you going to start one? Uh, as soon as I've got enough to say, which at this point in time, I really don't. Uh, um, Doesn't fucking stop me. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you, you can engage an audience, you know, hold their attention, be funny, you know. Uh, when I learn to all these things, I'll consider it. Well, 
As always, I'm the host of the Terra Firma podcast. It's a horror podcast, and I swear like fuck on it, so if that offends you, don't fucking listen. <laughs> That's going to be the show this week. <laughs> Do that again. Do that again. Do you use the uh, oil of Yule in your hands or something like that? Because it looks kind of... That's, aye, that looks really high. Oh, maybe it's just yeah. lighting. Uh, I've got a light. <laughs> Showbiz. <laughs> I've got a light and i got a cup. That's show business for you. <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll tell you what. Oh, fuck, it's back in focus. I was actually enjoying that blood in this there for a while, you know. After a couple of years of having to look at your mug. Could you do? Could you do the cord this and stand behind the curtain? Not particularly. <laughs> it's yeah. a bit close to the fucking wall. Ah, very right, okay. It's funny because before you came on, because we just you know we we're talking about your childhood and you used to have the bricked up one. That's what it was like. Right. Oh, anyway, right, that's the show this week. So right. I want to thank Greg and James for coming on. Well, thanks for having us on. And thank you all for watching. Tune in next week or don't. <laughs> Hope to make friends and influence people. Huh?